The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. I wooed my gal with music soft and finally won her hand. When I got smart and switched right to that milder lucky brand. Lucky packs the smoke that is perfection. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Enjoy your cigarette. Enjoy truly fine tobacco that combines both perfect mildness and rich taste in one great cigarette, Lucky Strike. For only fine tobacco gives you both perfect mildness and rich taste. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So, friends, be happy, go lucky, try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. gentlemen, important things happened in Beverly Hills yesterday. They weren't the kind of things you read about in the papers, but they were important, nevertheless. It all started late in the afternoon at Mary Livingston's house. Oh, Pauline, Pauline. Yes, Miss Livingston. I'd like you to straighten out the house. Mr. Benny is coming over. Oh, does he want you to sign a new lease? <laughs> no, no, this is just a social visit. Oh. Well, I can't clean the whole house. Your sister's still asleep in the guest room. Mm, then skip that room. Miss Livingston, why did your sister Babe make this trip to California? Uh, for the Legion convention. She was with the Fighting 69. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pauline, let her get all the rest she can because she has to leave soon and go back to her job. Is she still working as a deep-sea diver? <laughs> yes, and I hope the vacation out here makes her forget her recent loss. Loss? She was engaged to another deep-sea diver. May he rest in peace. Gee, what happened to him? Well, he was working on a salvage job, 80 feet underwater. Babe walked by and he tipped his hat. <laughs> <laughs> but Babe will get over it. I hope so. You know, Miss Livingston, life is funny. Years ago, you and I used to work side by side at the May Company. Now you're a big radio star and I'm your maid. Yeah. By the way, Pauline, can you lend me $5 for payday? <laughs> Sure, here. That's ten you owe me. Okay. Now, Pauline, you can finish cleaning up. I'm going to call Mr. Benny and see what's keeping him. Rochester, will you please answer? Oh, I forgot. He went to the store. Hello? Hello, Jack. I thought you were coming over to my house. I'm waiting for you. I'll be over. What's the rush? Well... Well, Jack, there's something I want to talk to you about. It's been on my mind a long time, and now that I've worked up enough courage, well, um, Jack, come over as soon as you can. Okay, Snoogie, I'll be over. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. I wonder what can be so important that she wants to talk to me about. She said it was... Hello, boss, I'm back from the store. Good, Rochester. What did you buy? A quarter of a pound of butter, a loaf of bread, two pounds of ground round, and our usual supply of canned goods. Oh. And, boss, I think next week I'll have to shop at a different market. Why? What's wrong with our regular market? Well, you know how they charge us less for cans at a bend? Yes. Well, this morning they caught me bending them. <laughs> Rochester, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Bending cans to get them cheaper. I'm glad you were caught. They wouldn't have caught me if I hadn't asked for a mop. What'd you need a mop for? I tried to bend a bottle of milk. That's the most ridiculous... Rochester, you're joking, aren't you? 
I was just trying to worry into giving me more money for shopping. I give you enough. Now, look, Rochester, I've got to rush over to Miss Livingston's house right away. I'll be back for dinner. Okay. See you later. Be happy-go-lucky, be happy-go-lucky strike. Oodle dee poop 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 Oodle dee poop poop Gee, that's a catchy song. Be happy-go-lucky, be happy-go-lucky strike. Gosh, it's been hot the last few days. Temperature's been way up to 104. Sure glad I didn't empty my swimming pool in September. Business has been great. <laughs> Yesterday, they were using towels faster than I could wash them. <laughs> be happy, go lucky, be happy. Yeah, I can't imagine what Mary wants to see me about. Couldn't be about her contract. She just signed a new one. I wonder if... Say, I'll bet I know what it is. For years, I've been asking her to marry me, and she's always turned me down. Now I'll bet she changed her mind. That's what it is. That's all it could be. Holy mackerel. Be happy, go lucky. Be happy, go lucky, strike. Be happy. She'll be wonderful when Mary and I get married. We'll be able to go to parties together, go on vacations together, file joint income tax returns. <laughs> La, 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 I think I'll stop at this drugstore and get a copy of True Story magazine. There's an article in this issue about me. I wonder where... May uh... I help you, sir? Oh, I just want to pick out a magazine. Now, let's see. Oh, here it is. True Story magazine. Yep, here's the article. Well, my picture, too. And it's in color. Hey, look at those big blue eyes. <laughs> Here's the story. Hello, everybody, by Jack Benny, as told to Joseph K. I was born in Milwaukee, you know, Illinois, 36 miles from Chicago. My father had a mint. Oh, clerk. Yes, sir. Give me your package of Lucky Strikes, please. Oh, here you are. Thanks. I would open a store with a buddy named Julius Finnegan. Dad's comment was, if you lose your own money, that's your privilege. Or what have you got against Julius? Dad and mother wanted me to be a... May I uh, wait on you, miss? Yes, I'd like this deck of canasta cards and two packages of cigarettes, please. Of what kind? Lucky Strikes. Yes, ma'am. Tomorrow's my father's birthday. Could you gift wrap a carton of Luckies? Oh, I'll be glad to. Thank you. I was afraid I could never reach it. So I was wondering... Gee, this story's so long, I haven't got time to stand here and read it. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> nah, it's about me. I'll buy it. Oh, clerk. Clerk. Yes, sir? I want this copy of True, Ma uh, True Story magazine. Yes, sir. That'll be 20 cents. Uh, here's a dollar. Thank you. I'll get you change. I wonder if I ought to get three or four. Oh, hello, four. Mr. Benny. Huh? Oh, hello, Dennis. What are you doing here in the drugstore? I'm buying a magazine. Oh. What are you doing here, Dennis? I'm buying some arsenic. I'm going to commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's nice. Uh, Clark, give me my change. <laughs> Just a minute, mister. Did you hear what he said? Yes, give me my change. Do you know him? Uh-huh. Well, aren't you going to do anything about it? No, give me my change. <laughs> well, I'm going to. Young man, why do you want to commit suicide? Well, the girl I was in love with sneaked off and married somebody else. Oh, that's too bad. When did you find out about it? Two years ago. <laughs> Clerk, give me my change. <laughs> Young man, you say your girl left you two years ago. Why have you waited so long to kill yourself? I wanted to see if Dick Tracy would catch TV Wiggles. <laughs> Young man, here's your bottle of arsenic, compliments of the house. Thank you. Oh, oh, mister. Yes? Do I get anything back on the bottle? Oh, for heaven's sake, Dennis. Go home. Yes, sir. Goodbye. You see, clerk, you see? 
Now, clerk, how about my change? Here you are, sir. Thank you. Can't understand a kid like Dennis Day. Seems that the older he gets, the sillier he gets. And yet to hear him sing, you'd think he was a normal human being. What a voice. Yesterday, when he came over to my house to try out his song, it sounded so beautiful. He looked so bright as he was standing there by the piano. I cannot understand this kid. Irene, good night. Irene, good night. Good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. I'll see you in my dream. Sometimes I live in the country. Sometimes I live in town Sometimes I take a great notion To jump into the river and drown Irene, good night Irene, good night Good night, Irene Good night, Irene I'll see you in Yep, his voice was better than ever. But as soon as he got through singing, he turned to me and said, Goodbye, Mr. Benny, have a nice trip. Then I went upstairs and packed before I realized I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> he drives me nuts. Well, there's Mary's house. I wonder how she's going to go about it. I bet she'd be coy and bashful. See, June would be a nice month to get married. I wonder what I should have for my best man. I could have my agent. He should be out on parole by then. <laughs> oh, well, I got time to think about it. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. You, uh... You want to talk to me, eh? Yes, sir. Uh, come on into the den. Okay. <laughs> okay, Mary. What is it, kid? Uh, just a second. I want to lock the door. Oh, gee. <laughs> well, come on, Mary. Tell me. Tell uh, me. What is it? Uh, wait, Jack. I want to shut the window. The window? Mmm. <laughs> All right, Mary, you got me over here. You lock the door. You close the window. Now, gee, what is it? What do you talk to me about, huh? 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 Jack, I've been thinking about this one subject for a long time. Yes, yes. What is it, Mary? Jack, something's got to be done about your being so cheap. <laughs> Is that, is that all you wanted to talk to me about? Yes, Jack, and I'm serious. It's gone to a point where everybody in town is talking about it. About me being cheap? Just name one person who said so. Well, Claudette Colbert, Danny Kay, Gary... I only asked for one. <laughs> and anyway, a fine bunch they are to talk about me being cheap. Especially that Danny Kay. With that head of hair of his. That guy's too cheap to spend 50 cents for a haircut. They're a dollar and a quarter now. Oh. <laughs> Jack, yeah. look, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, but all I can do is tell you this. You better change your ways or you won't have a friend in the world. Well, all right, Mary. I'll tell you what I'll do if you think I'm so cheap. You put on your best evening dress, and tonight I'll take you to dinner at Ciro's. Mm, I'm sorry, Jack, but I already have a date for tonight. You have? With whom? Oh, somebody. You don't know him. Oh. 
You know, Mary, a funny thing. When you called me to come over here, I was so sure you were going to... Well... Going to what? Oh, never mind. I'll be running along. Bye, Jack. Goodbye, Mary. Yeah, yeah, it's me. What's the matter? Don't you feel well? No, I feel all right. Well, I'll go in and fix some dinner. Just a minute. Huh? Come here, Rochester. Yes, sir. Rochester. Yes, boss. Rochester, do you think I'm cheap? Oh, no, boss. I wouldn't say cheap. A little snub, maybe, but not cheap. <laughs> That's right, Rochester. I don't believe in throwing my money away, but I'm certainly not miserly. See, I remember last year when I was walking down the street and a panhandler came over to me. He only asked me for a dime, and I gave him 50 cents. <laughs> there they go again. Rochester, I don't feel like eating. I'm going to bed. Good night. Good night, boss. Oh, boy, was I fooled. I was sure Mary had decided to marry me. I certainly asked her enough. See, the first time I asked her was when she was working at the May Company. See, if she'd accepted me then, we'd have been married a long time now. Maybe even have a family. Imagine being married to Mary. All these years. And have a family. Married to Mary. Sixth and Figueroa. Let him off, please. Let him off. Hey, Mary, here's our corner. I'm coming, Pauline. Let him off, please. Let him off. Gee, I wish I lived closer to the bus line. After standing behind the stocking counter all day, my feet are killing me. We sure were busy today, weren't we? Yeah. Hello, Mrs. Spinney. Hello, Mrs. Krausmeyer. How are the children? Well, Leonard and Julius are fine. Well, that's good. But Irving Milk... Pack, Sam, George, Cliff, Bonnie, Peggy, Trudy, Michael, and Zippo have colds. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Yeah, and what a time for it to happen. The oldest one starts school next week. <laughs> Well, everything happens at once. It sure is hot today, isn't it? Yeah, if this is Indian summer, the Indians can stop already. <laughs> you said it. Goodbye, Mrs. Krasmeyer. Goodbye, Mrs. Benny. As I was saying, Pauline, I'm sorry we had to work so late. I was anxious to get home early because today's my wedding anniversary. Really? How long have you been married to that schnook? <laughs> 22 years. Well, buck up, kid. It could have happened to anybody. I almost fell for him myself. I'll never forget that first day he walked into the store. Has he still got that ukulele? <laughs> no, he's got something worse now, a violin. Oh, brother. By the way, how's your daughter? Joni? Oh, she's fine. You know, she's 17 now. Time certainly flies. Yeah. Well, here's where I live. Night, Pauline. Good night, Mary. Hello, Johnny. Oh, hello, Mother. I was so busy with my homework, I didn't hear you come in. But, Joni, as a rule, you're finished with your homework by this time. Well, I'm doing it over. I never should have asked Daddy to help me. <laughs> 
Look, he did all my arithmetic problems, and every answer is 39. <laughs> oh, that's a number that's stuck in his mind. Where's Daddy now? He's in his room. Oh. Oh, why doesn't he stop scratching on that thing? Oh, I know how you feel, Mother. At school, they can't understand why I flunk music appreciation. <laughs> I know what you mean. Sometimes I think that... Oh, oh hello, wifey. How's my little sweetheart today? Little sweetheart, little sweetheart. You don't even know what today is. I do, too. It's our anniversary. It's just 22 years ago today that you said, I do. Yeah, me and my big mouth. <laughs> What? For 22 years, you've been telling me you're going to be a big radio star. When is it going to happen? When? Oh, Mother, don't pick on Daddy. He's such a good cook. <laughs> Darn right. I've been slaving over a hot stove all day preparing dinner. Now, who can that be? I'll get it. Hello. Hello. Oh, Mother, this is my new boyfriend. I met him in school. His name is Eugene McNulty. Eugene Patrick McNulty. <laughs> Eugene, I want you to meet my mother and father. How do you do, Mrs. Benny? No, no, this is my mother. Daddy, take off that apron. <laughs> Gee, and I kissed his hand. <laughs> hmm. Uh, would you young folks like to be alone? No, thanks. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Now, come on. Let's leave the children alone. Okay. Eugene. Yeah? Would you like to go into the parlor? Uh-huh. Gee, what a beautiful room. You've got a big radio, a piano, and a television set. Yeah, Mother worked awfully hard. <laughs> That's a picture of her on the piano. Oh, this picture over here. Is this your father? Yeah, that picture was taken when he was in the Navy. Gee, you must be proud of him. Underneath it says Admiral. That's the name of the television set. <laughs> oh. Here's our family album. Would you like to look through it? Uh-huh. This is my cousin Rita. Oh. And this is cousin Earl. And this one here is my Uncle Mert. Who's that tough-looking guy standing beside him? My Aunt Babe. <laughs> Gee, she sure has a big head. That's her diving helmet. <laughs> and here on the next page is Mama and Daddy's wedding picture. Don't they look nice? Yeah, but why is your father holding that violin? Everybody notices that. He played at his own wedding. <laughs> Well, what are you laughing at? As they marched down the aisle to the strains of Oh, Promise Me, Mama had to hold his rosin. <laughs> no. On a pillow, yes. <laughs> Say, Joni, who's this cute little girl on the opposite page? Well, that's a picture of me the day I started school. Oh, but you look like you're only two years old. I was. Daddy wanted me to get through school fast so I could go to work. I think that's terrible. Oh, I don't mind, as long as it helps Mother. You know, she's been working at the May Company ever since she and Daddy got married. Work, work, work. She never even had one day off. I was born in an elevator. <laughs> Dinner's on the table. Excuse us, Eugene. <laughs> Jack, invite him to dinner. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Then I can talk to him and find out how much money he makes. <laughs> well, we got to see that our daughter marries well. You can't keep working forever. <laughs> Come on, children, to the table. Uh, Eugene, you sit here next to Joni. That's right. Isn't that cute, Mother? Daddy decided to play his violin while we have dinner. 
Well, Mr. Benny, why don't you sit down and eat with us? No, 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 no. I prefer to play. You see, if you care to express your appreciation for the music, there's an empty plate on the table. <laughs> well, that does it. Huh? I've stood all I can. I didn't mind working all these years. Mary. I didn't mind you insulting my friends. But now you've gone too far. Who's you weren't in hurting Jody's chances, and why? Because you're cheap. That's what you are. You're cheap, cheap, cheap. Do you hear me? Cheap. But, Mary, I'm not cheap. I'm not cheap. A little snug, maybe, but I'm not cheap. I'm not cheap. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not cheap. Boss, boss, wake up. Wake up. I'm... Uh-huh. Boss, you've been dreaming. I've... Yeah. Yeah, I guess I was. Gee, Rochester was the most... I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Mary. Oh, what is it, Mary? Well, I've been doing a lot of thinking, and... Jack, I'm sorry about those things I said to you today. Oh, that's all right, Mary. And I must tell you something funny. I just had a dream that you and I were married. And we had a 17-year-old daughter, Joni. And her boyfriend was Dennis. Uh, was I still working at the May Company? Yes. I thought so. Good night, Jack. <laughs> This is the season of America's most shameful waste, forest fires. Help prevent forest fires by extra care in the handling of matches, cigarettes, and an extinguishing campfires. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a moment. But first, everybody be happy, go lucky, and let's get into the spirit of the football season. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy. I count the downs and mark the yards Reeled off by every back And in between the halves I smoke one half a lucky pack I lead the crowd in rah, rah, rah To cheer the team we like But when it comes to cigarettes We cheer for lucky strike Be happy, go lucky Be happy, go lucky strike Be happy, go lucky Go lucky strike today Yes, friends, be happy, go lucky Enjoy your cigarettes Puff by puff, you'll find Lucky's always give you perfect mildness. In fact, scientific tests confirmed by three independent consulting laboratories prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand. And puff by puff, you always get rich taste, too. All the deep-down smoking enjoyment that comes from truly fine tobacco. Because LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So, friends, be happy. Go Lucky. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Ladies and gentlemen, the part of Joan Benny was played by Miss Joan Benny. And next Oh, Jack. Week... Yes, Don. The next time you have a dream, put me in it, will you? I didn't have one line on this show. Well, Don, that's right. You weren't in the show. But don't worry. A check will be made out in your name. Thanks. Just endorse it and give it to Joni. What? Good night, sir. <laughs> be sure to hear Dennis Day in the day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.